Well, hey, everybody. Well, I hope your, your groups are going great so far and hope you guys have some good snacks. And actually, I should say, I hope you have some healthy snacks, given our topic today, because today we're actually talking about what Scripture has to say about our physical health. So go ahead and grab your carrots and uh, let's see what, what God's Word has to say here. Well, as you just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul specifically is using the subject of sex to make his point. Are we sure this isn't Shane's topic? So when we look at this passage, pretty quickly it becomes clear that, that sexual immorality was one of the most serious issues that the Corinthians were facing. We probably all agree that that, that really hasn't changed much um, for us. Paul says several significant and extraordinary things about our bodies. He starts by quoting these popular uh, slogans from the culture at the time. The first slogan was that all things are lawful for me. The, Christian, the Christians there in Corinth, they were saying that everything's permissible for me, isn't it? Saying I'm no longer under Jewish law. I'm free from that. So basically, that means I can do whatever I want, right? I mean, it's, it's all about God's grace and we're, we're free in Christ. It's all good, man. It's like everything's going to be fine. But Paul's saying, friends, my brothers and sisters, he's saying it's not fine. It's everything but fine. Paul says, you know, you guys are saying that, that all things are lawful, but he's saying you guys, you're just not getting it because everything is not helpful. Everything is not good for you. In other words, just because you can do something, it doesn't mean that you should do something. Like, for example, you're, you're free to use your, your iPhone as a hammer, right? Or you can choose to run your car with no oil in the engine. I mean, for you, for you gamers out there, you, you're free to take your game into the shower with you and, and play it in there, right? I mean, you're free to, to feed your dog M&Ms instead of dog food just because you just love him so much. Or, or for example, I'm free to use my knife as a screwdriver, and, and I've done that a few times. And you know what? A couple of my favorite knives will never again do what they were designed to do. Because basically, I destroyed them because the one, I wasn't using them the way that their designer intended them to be used. So, in this passage, Paul is speaking about, he speaks about prostitution and he speaks about sexual immorality. And, and let's be honest, that folks who, who choose to be engaged in those activities, people who choose to be engaged in, in sex outside of marriage, they're not doing that to help the other person. They're not doing it to benefit somebody else, are they? I mean, the truth is, is, is that they're doing those things to satisfy their own selfish and fleshly desires. And I just want to say, friends, that is not freedom. That is bondage. Now, you might say, man, that's just too difficult. Like, that sounds good, but, that, but what you're saying is impossible. Well, well verse 12, there in, in the passage that we've been, been reading, Paul says, I will not be dominated by anything. He says, in other words, I will not be brought under the control of anything. And if Paul is saying that, then, then we can conclude one thing for sure, right? That, that we have a choice. In other words, if some things were just too overwhelming for Christians to resist, or, or some temptations just too great, then Paul couldn't say that. But what he says is, he says, I will not be dominated by anything. That means that we have a choice. And that means that God expects me to manage my body. Go ahead and write that down. The other Corinthian slogan that Paul quotes is, food for the stomach and the stomach for food. Well, what, what were they saying there? Well, what they're saying is that, that just like the stomach is made for food, our bodies are made for sex. They were trying to make this point, And, you know, it's just natural we should just do whatever we feel like doing and, and just kind of go with the flow and take the path of least, of least resistance. And, and Paul says, no, 
actually, friends, God, the creator of the universe, the sustainer of all things, that he created your body for a purpose. He says, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. See, what we do with our bodies is a reflection of our attitude towards God. And to be healthy, Scripture tells us that we need to have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. So when you have a chance, read Philippians 2. But, so what was Christ's attitude? Well, I'll just tell you it was one of humility and love. Scripture tells us that, that although Christ was God, he didn't cling to his demand, he didn't cling to or demand his rights as God, but instead he laid aside his mighty power and his glory and he took on the nature of a man, which that in and of itself is, is humbling enough, more so than, than, than we can really possibly imagine what it would be like for God to take on this nasty human flesh. But, but he went even further than that. He lived a perfect life, and then he allowed himself to die a criminal's death, a humiliating death on the cross. He did all of that so that our sins could be paid for, so that we could be declared righteous, so that our broken relationship with God could be reconciled. Now, friends, that is humble, others-focused, selfless love that God demonstrated for us. And the point is, friends, that, that what we do with our bodies is one of the most significant ways that we live out the great commandment which we all probably know what that is, right? It says what? To love God and love others, right? I knew you guys knew that. And we do that by managing our bodies. In this passage, Paul goes on to say that God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. We know that, that Jesus died on the cross, that he was placed in a tomb, and after three days, God resurrected him. God brought Jesus' body back to life. It wasn't exactly the same. Like, his body was different, but it was his body that was raised. And the Bible says that, that God's going to do the same thing for us. He's going to resurrect our bodies. So write this down, that, that my body will be resurrected after I die. One day... When, after, when God renews the heavens and the earth, we're going to have bodies. We're going to have physical bodies. Did you guys know that? We're not just spirits floating around. We're going to have physical bodies. We don't know exactly what that's going to be like, but we know that we're going to have them. And Paul, he's reminding us that our relationship with the Lord, it's not just spiritual, but it's actually physical as well, that, that our bodies are important to him. He gave them to us for a reason. He has a plan for them. Friends, if our bodies are being redeemed now and in the future, then what we do with them, it must matter. It must be important. And now you might say, and I can relate to this, it's like, man, my body's worn out. My body's falling apart. Or you might even say, hey, you know, what about people who, who are cremated? And, and I just want to say that, you know, if, if God forbid somehow somebody's body is totally destroyed, that, that he who created all of us, he who holds all things together, when the time comes, like, he can bring all those molecules and cells and all, those, and all that back together. So don't worry about that. But it's the heart behind the choices that really matter. That's the point here. Another amazing truth about our physical bodies is that if you've placed your faith in Jesus, meaning you've placed your faith in him and you're now a child of God, then the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So write this down. The Holy Spirit lives in my body. You know, in the Old Testament, the, the point of the temple was that that's where God's presence was. I mean, God's everywhere, you know, but, but the idea was that that's where God's people would go to encounter him. And, and Paul 
is reminding the Corinthians that now, now, he has made us his temple. Like, you've probably heard that before, but, but really stop and think about that, that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He's made our body his temple. Because, see, being a Christian, it's not about legalism or, or just trying to follow the rules or, or being a good person. It's about placing our faith in Jesus and then having the Holy Spirit come and live inside of us and, and listen to him. Listen to him and, and say yes to him. And then through that, have him, this process of, of transforming us to be more like him. And Paul says that what we do with our bodies can actually get in the way of that process. He's saying if you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing with your bodies, you can actually, you can actually get in the way of the Holy Spirit trying to communicate to you, and you can get in the way of that process happening. And, and Paul's saying, especially with sexual sin. And that, that's because there's nothing more intimate, nothing more personal than what we do sexually with our bodies. And that's why in verse 18, Paul is saying, flee from sexual immorality. Now, this may mean different things for different people. Like, it might mean putting down that book that, that you know just isn't, in, that it's, it's inappropriate or, or turning off a movie or, you know, or not engaging in a relationship or getting out of a relationship that is, you know is not honoring to the Lord or, or even avoiding a, an inappropriate conversation. And it can mean a lot of other things. But, but friends, the point is, is that choosing to have sexual integrity is one of the most significant ways that we care for our bodies. And I just hope that this is coming through, that, that caring for our bodies is an important way that we honor the Lord. And finally, the last thing that Paul reminds us of is, is that we're not our own. We need to remember that, and you can write this down, that, that Jesus bought my body on the cross. So go ahead and write it down, and, and you'll see... Um, I am free because I was bought for a price. I was a slave to sin with no hope and, and no ability to pay my debt. But God, who loved me so much, he sent his son to die for us while we were still sinners. He paid the ultimate price. And that's why I need to remember that my body is not my own. It belongs to him. And what I do matters a lot to him. All right, friends, I want to pray for us and just pray that you have a wonderful group together. So, Lord God, I thank you for your word. I pray for a blessing over this group right now as they start their discussion. And this can be a challenging topic, but I just pray that you open hearts and minds and that um, you just allow them to be changed and grow closer to you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great group.